Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we are talking about my opinion for the five greatest World War II movies of all time. We are talking about HBO Go and how they might have started a trend with paid subscription services. And we're finishing it off with the first Robert Morris University Scholarship. Here we go. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. And on, everybody, welcome to Words from My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. Chewbacca likes to do this running start into the show nowadays. He just likes to start from far away and run as close as he can. And 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 you might He actually starts from California and runs all the way here. That is how loud he is. You were not just hearing it in your headphones. Yes. And you were not just hearing it in your headphones or on your speakers. It was actually just reverberating throughout the country. That's what it was doing. On a time delay. The sound day. travels slower than Chewbacca. And he does it every time somebody clicks play on the video, so just know that. I know you might be clicking t- at different times, but he does it. He does. That's what he does. But yeah, if you notice, my voice is sounding like extra debonair or something like that. It's because, uh, you know, allergies suck. Yeah, they do. You Brendan suck. doesn't know. No, I don't. I don't suck, man. That's not cool, man. I don't appreciate that. I don't like it. I don't know why you would say something like that. What? See if I can get him. Damn. I was about to say, damn it. Brendan controls the Chewbacca sound effects, so if he doesn't want Chewbacca to get him, he won't get him. But yeah, so tonight is Monday, so we are doing our entertainment show. Um, and we're going to start it off the same way we start off every Monday night with the horrible movie of the week review. <laughs> and this has really turned into not so much as a review as as we're, we're maybe we'll change the name of it too, but this is the five reasons why you should not watch Brick Mansions. Now, Brick Mansions is a movie um, with Paul Walker in it. I believe it's the last one he fully filmed. So, R.I.P. Paul Walker. I'm sorry that your last movie is showing up on this. Um, but yeah, there's nothing I can do about it, man. It was bad. It was bad, and I watched it, so i got to get something out of watching a bad movie. But let's start it off with the reason number five, and that is um, that's because this is a remake of another movie, and it was a French movie, and that movie was already considered like a B-movie in France, and I don't know if you know anything about France's film industry, but it sucks. So, yeah, if you're a B-movie in France remaking you for America doesn't quite make much sense. If you want to know what that movie was, it's called like B-13 or D-13. I can't remember what it was. It's Something it was worthless. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. So, yeah, that's number five. Number four. Um, yeah, so the lead character in this movie, not the Paul Walker lead character because they kind of split it into two leads. Um, it's this French dude called Lavoie or something like that. He's known for being a really good parkour artist. So... Everything aside from this movie, like his parts are pretty cool when he's jumping around doing all this crazy acrobatic stuff. That's pretty cool. But he doesn't say a word for like the first, you know, 30 minutes of the movie. So that kind of sends some red flares. And then you'll know why. Some movies that we've seen would probably benefit from no one saying any words for the first 30 minutes of the film. To be honest with you, this movie would have been a lot cooler if none of the lead actors had said anything. And I'm talking about RZA. Paul Walker and this this parkour guy. So if none of them had had any speaking parts, probably would not be on the horrible movie of the week review. I'm just saying, just saying. But number three is very close to number four. And Brendan, take it away while I see. <laughs> well, that's how things happen. I don't know. Okay, good cover. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, number three, I didn't is, watch the movie. <laughs> this is probably the reason he does not talk. Is um, when he does talk, it is a voiceover. And the voiceover is not very convincing, 
And the other thing is they keep calling him the French dude. They're like, hey, French dude. Hey, French dude. Hey, French dude. And is that, the is that just over... to go off the fact that the original movie was French? And this guy is French, too. So, uh, but he doesn't Was he in really the original have... movie? Did he make yes. a remake with uh, yes. of the movie he was already in? Yes, he did. That is that is the truth. That He was in the original <laughs> movie. No, I'm not even joking. He really was in the original movie. And that's... Yeah. That yes, is that's pretty bad. Um, but yeah, that's hilarious. So, but when the voiceover comes in, like, it doesn't even really have a French accent. It sounds like an American guy trying to have a French accent. So it's like there's plenty of good voice talent out there. Why not just get somebody with a French accent? I just I don't understand, uh, but that's all right. Number two, um, when your best actors are Paul Walker and RZA, you are in trouble. Uh, now I love RZA. RZA, please do not hate me because not not even talking about his Wu Tang Clan where he was the major producer for that group and he's an awesome rapper. Um, not even talking about any of that. His contributions to film in general has been awesome throughout the years. Uh, if you don't know, he wrote the entire Kill Bill soundtrack. He did a lot with uh, Django Unchained. He's kind of partnered with Quentin Tarantino a couple times. And he's done some amazing music scores for films. But when you try to act, dude, you suck. <laughs> really, really bad. Like, if you've ever seen Man with the Iron Fist, horrible. He's no, he's no Will Smith. You know that making that jump from uh, from okay. rapping well, to acting. I'm gonna say this now. I love Will Smith as an actor. Not so big of a fan of his, him as a rapper. Um, it's almost the opposite with RZA. Amazing, amazing rapper slash producer slash musical genius. But when it comes to acting, it looks like he went to a back alley and got his acting lessons from like a dumpster guy. I don't. See, I don't even know. I'm gonna have to disagree with you because I thought Fresh Prince was awesome, but. You know, it's the kind of stuff I, I care for. I don't know. And then there was... I'm not uh, a big fan of rap. No. I mean, he had some catchy tunes, don't get me wrong, but no, not a big fan. Well, there's like been some when, other rappers, though, that have done when, decent, you know, move-overs from, from rapping to acting, but... Hello, Cool J's done all right. I'm not going to hate on his acting. It's been all right from some of the roles he's done. Um, Common has some decent acting roles here and there. You really need to pick his right places. But that's about the list that I know. Uh, no, there's some others. There's some others out there. Name one more. Name one more. Uh, no, no, don't Google one more. Name one more. We can all hear tea. you typing. Ice tea. Okay. All right. He's no, a, I wasn't a big fan like, of his rap either, a, but you're right. Yeah, he, but but he's he plays one part and he plays it well. He's been he a few different things, but yeah, he's basically usually a cop. But he's really good on Law and Order. So there you go. Well, let me give you an example of one of Riz's lines. He's like, he's sitting there, and he's cutting peppers, and he brings his men, and they just failed him in an assignment, because he's the big kingpin drug lord. He's cutting peppers. My mother would roll over in her grave if she saw me putting these peppers in her recipe. And that, that's his line. <laughs> All right, so... And then he sneezes just... in, the, in the recipe? It was really bad. I was, was like, terrible. damn, dude, you can't even put the cover on the pot first? Yeah. <laughs> You know, that was like probably the best part of his acting when he sneezed right into it. So <laughs> I was like, that is a very convincing sneeze. How did you get that, Riza? On cue. That was pretty good. But the number one reason why you should not watch this movie, um, and I'm going to go ahead and say spoilers. So if you do want to see this movie, uh, go ahead and watch the spoilers because then you will not want to see this movie. The solution to the movie. Now, the big problem was it's a ghetto in Detroit, and they to get rid of crime, they just put a 40-foot wall up around it and locked all the bad people in. So the, um, the solution to the movie at the very, very, very end is to have the murdering, sadistic drug kingpin who allows rape and pillaging and all that stuff, uh, he runs for mayor. That's, that's the solution to the movie of Detroit. And maybe he wouldn't be a bad mayor of Detroit, because... So they lock everyone in, but they still allow them to vote for mayor. No, stuff happens where the walls come down afterwards. But... Okay, then the, it was already solved. No, they, just, they brought the walls just, down. Yeah, but... It, just trust me. Just trust me. <laughs> it, 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 that's about as much sense as the plot made. That's, we're just going to go from there, you know. So, that is our five reasons you should not watch this movie. And I'm going to give this movie a one and a half Chewbacca chainsaws out of five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's purge that from our memories and move on to a movie 
uh, slash movies uh, that is actually pretty good. Um, now, Fury just came out this past week, and if you don't know what that is, that is the Brad Pitt movie. Now, I have not seen it, but if Brad Pitt's in it, generally speaking, he's one of those actors. He usually picks good roles for himself. But it is about a, it's a World War II story about a tank uh, crew, uh, and they kind of get stuck behind enemy, enemy lines, and, you know, they do some heroic stuff. Okay, so that got me thinking that there has probably been more movies about World War II than any other time period in history. I mean, think about it. Think about it. There's been a bazillion of them. So I'm just going to run down my list of what I think, what the show thinks, because I'm going to speak for Brendan here, um, of what the top five World War II movies of all time are. So um, let's start off with number five. And now a lot of people might disagree with me, but uh, when I saw this as a kid, it just really stuck with me, and I really enjoyed the movie. And it's Enemy at the Gates. Now, you might say, well, Brian, you hate bad fake accents. Jude Law is supposed to be a Russian that puts on an English accent. Yes, yes. And Ed Harris is supposed to be a German who puts on an American accent. And I'm going to put this out there. Anyone else out there, every time you hear Jude Law, you just think Dude Love and hear the Dude Love sound? Uh, not sound, but music. Wait, why? You know what I'm talking about? No. With Vic Foley when he played Dude Love in wrestling, WWE, WWF, whatever time period he did it. How does that have anything to do with Jude Law? You, you don't think about it? Like, it just sounds similar. Jude, Jude Law. Law and Dude, Dude Love. Love. No, it doesn't. No. All right. All right. Comment down womp below yourself. if you agree womp, with me. Womp yourself for that one, please. Come on. You deserve a womp on that. Thank you. I always get my fair womps, and that is a womp for Brendan on that one. That is that is all there. Start the be. revolution, guys. Comment down below. Flood so, it with dude no. love. Dude right, love. Fine. Dude love. If we get one comment, just one comment on next week's entertainment show, I will let Brendan womp me for 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 womping him. I, I forever. Don't know. No, not forever. Just one womp. Uh, I'll do many womps. womps. Fine, you get three <laughs> womps in a row. Fine. Fine. I get as many womps as I get Dude Love. If we get one comment on Dude Love sounding Guys, like Guys, we need you to flood it with Dude Love so we can have an entire episode Just of Whopping one Brian. comment is all I'm asking for. I'll throw in some new her. womps, too. Like, I'll, I'll have some fun with this. Come on. Yeah, okay, yeah. Flood no, it. it won't <laughs> But yeah, Enemy at the Gates was a really cool uh, just sniper versus sniper movie, and I thought this was an interesting aspect of World War II, and they kind of focused on the Battle of Stalingrad, which is not something Western movies really focus on, because after World War II, Russia's was bad, so... Um, and pretty much during World War II, Russia was bad, but it's like the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but I just thought it was a pretty cool take on that. Uh, number four um, is a really good movie. Some people would move it way up the list, than where I had it, but that was Thin Red Line, and that was um, really good. I believe Sean Penn was in that. That was an awesome, awesome World War II movie. Uh, number three, eh, you might be able to say that this isn't really a World War II movie, but I'm going to say that it is, and that is Inglorious Bastards, the uh, Quentin Tar Tarantino directed movie. Hey, and another Brad Pitt one. That's going pretty high on the list. Number three, for what yeah. it is. Yeah, I mean, it's an alternate reality timeline. Like, what if? They had gotten in there and done this. So, but I just love Quentin Tarantino movies. Almost all of them I like. Uh, so, I just really like this one too. I thought it was fun. Um, it had enough comedy, uh, you know, and it just really showed you the bad guys really got what they deserved at the end. And you know, it's just one of those movies that you walk out of the theater feeling like, ah, yes, I feel I feel good about that movie. You know, it, it just. It, went full circle, there's no questions left, everything has been answered, you're just happy with the ending, it's just one of those satisfying movie experiences. And you don't always get that. I hate those movies that are like, cliffhanger at the end, or guess what might have happened later. That annoys me. I didn't go to a movie for you not to explain everything that went on. You know, you have to... I did. Like, I like those movies. Well, like Inception. Great movie, but it's like, oh, is he still in the dream or not? Because they spin the top and yes, they don't show if it's... the whole up. thing. Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, you got to tell me what happened in the movie. Give me some resolution. You supply it. You figure it out. I Think don't want it. to. I, I wouldn't be Think going to the movies if I had a good imagination. If I had a good imagination, I would be making movies not going to. That is all I've got to say. Maybe you should make some movies. Maybe it's like if they had ended Star Wars before... Like, like Darth Vader's about to throw the Emperor into the pit, but doesn't? They don't show it. They're like, "Oh, it's over!" And you're like, "Wait, 
Does the Empire get destroyed? Does it still go on? Do the Rebels win? No, they don't do that to you. They let you know what happens. You have you don't know that everything Jabba's gets dancing involved. around. They beat the Emperor, but there's all kinds of commanders and no. like the whole Empire style. Because it's Darth Vader number two. He turns over to the light side. It, they win. They win. All right, they win. There was other political guys already, though. Nope. Nope, they win. Because they destroyed them all. It was only clones. Nope. Okay, fine. We'll have to agree to disagree. But they pretty much let you know that it all they win when you have the little Jawas dancing around or whatever. Yeah, but Leia them. assumed the, the role of the Empress and went to the dark side. Alright, see, so you're just making that up now. <laughs> Did you see you. after the credits? Like, have I don't appreciate all these you years you didn't see the scene ruining. after the credits? The resolution for that movie. Because so. remember, they said, they said, like, oh, there's another, right? Right? Except for she's too old. But they didn't need another. And she's too corrupted by power. That was because in case she's they a princess. needed another, and they did not need another because they had. And she and felt worthless, on. and thus she went aside. No, no. Anger no, led no. to fear. Fear led to hate. But she won. To Why would she be angry about winning? Oh, I'm so angry that we won, darn it. Because she was supposed to be the hero, Brian, and then her brother, who came out of nowhere, and just like took all the credit for saving the day, and he got to talk to their father. She never did. Yeah, she did. She talked to Darth Vader multiple times. For like two seconds, she didn't know it was her father. No, but she talked to him multiple times. I mean, she figured out. I, I don't even know if she figured it out later. Why are you? Why are you ruining the nice clean ending of that movie? Why? Because why? now we uh, scrap all of Disney's projects. Well, they are making another three movies, so I don't care. Scrap all that. Rise of Dark Leia. Maybe that'll that, happen. For the next one. You that never know. Needs to happen. They might do it. They might do it. You never they know. They better do it. Well, let's, 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 keep, let's keep the list moving, and because uh, we kind of got sidetracked. So number two uh, was The Great Escape. Now, I really like this movie. This was a Steve McQueen. Um, he was huge in the 60s. If you don't know who he was, uh, watch Bullet or something like that. That was a really cool movie. A lot of fun things happened. Now, it was very depressing at the end because most of those people who escaped from the prison did not make it and died, but um, a couple of them make it out, and so you have a kind of a happy story. Um, and I like that, so... Sort of happy, not always happy. Mm. But eh, what can you do? But before we go on to number one, I'm going to give you some honorable mentions. Um, honorable mention number one was Das Boot. If you haven't seen that one, that was a pretty good one. I don't believe that was the in German English. one. Yeah. Was that about World War Two or World War One? No, that was about World War Two. Oh, okay. Um, then Schindler's List. That didn't make it because it's more depressing, and but it's an important. Oh, so so you want to just ignore. Ignore the, 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 the tragedies there is what I'm hearing. No, there's tons of tragedy. I just, you know, I'm not trying to ignore it. That's part of the reason that made makes World War II movies so much out there is because you have the bad guys and the Nazis. There's no, it's, it's cut and dry. You know, most wars in history, you cannot say, this is the bad guys. These are the good guys. And in World War II, you could definitely say that. And I guess Schindler's List does kind of paint that picture, why the Nazis are the bad guys. And you do get some, some, you know, redemption, some of the, the good things out of humans when the worst is happening, you see some of the best happen too. Um, so you know what they've never done? I don't think they've ever done a, uh, a movie about the internment camps. Yeah, that's because America's won, Americans won, and they don't want to talk about that. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and, and now to say... Wow. All right. I didn't want to say get into that, but uh, just to say, yes, the internment camps were horrible. I'm not excusing them in any way, shape, or form. They were bad. Those people were not treated like they were in Nazi prison camps, so you can't really make that. I'm, I'm just saying, like, we, they, they haven't made a movie about it. I'm a little bit surprised. I would actually all, be all the movies about World War II things. You know? I would be interested in seeing in a movie about that. I, I really would. You're right. That If you'd like to steal our idea, go ahead and send the check towards my face. Um, just send it to us. We'll take the money. Because that would be we'll a take good it. We, we won't even like, take like a t fake, like we're donating it to some like, Japanese cultural we'll center. We'll take the money. I'll buy a better <laughs> webcam. How about that? You know? <laughs> we'll just go straight take it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would watch a movie about that. So that you're right. That is a good idea. And then the Big Red One, um, which most people know from being a Call of Duty game back in the day. Um, that was another good movie. It was from the 70s, I believe. So that was a good one. But let's move it to our number one greatest World War II movie of all time. And it better be what I'm thinking. 
and I'll let Brennan go ahead and say because I didn't discuss the list with Brennan before the show, but I'll bet he knows what it is. Go ahead, Brennan, tell us what it, it is. Better be Saving Private Ryan. And of course, it's Saving Private Ryan. Silly. How could I not say that's the best World War II movie of all time? Like it, it just is. Like honestly, the the plot devices in it are not the most uh, compelling, but it is just so well done. It draws you into the characters so well. Um, it, it really hits you, yeah. Especially by that that ending. Like, there, there's just so much good going on. It was one of the big Spielberg films, of course, and one of the reasons why Spielberg really is a great director, despite some other, uh, you know, rocky things he's done well, since it, then. It really showed off some of his attention to detail. Uh, mm -hmm. Just um, you, you heard stories. I, I really, I remember stories when that movie first came out. A lot of World War II veterans went to go see it and had to leave during the first scene. If you were there on the the Normandy invasion, that was almost too real, you know. It, I, I heard it, people saying that uh, some people said that the only thing that they they didn't get was the smell. Like, I'm glad it was just that, that realistic. The only thing that was lacking was the smell of of D Day. Yeah, so because but, but you can't you do have, that. But you're right. They had the character development, and they showed you the sense of loss, the sacrifice that these guys were going for. Because every time they kind of build up a character, boom, he's out of it. Like I just remember the medic Wade. They showed him, and they they really attach you to him. He's the good guy. He's got he's got courage, but he's the medic. You know, he wants to help people. And then they say, okay, well, we need somebody to run this gunner. And he says, I'll do it. I'll, you know, I'll do it. And, mm -hmm. and it just shows, you know, the courage. And then even when they let that, that rush German soldier go, and then he shows back up at the end, you know, I mean, it just, it just went full circle. And then you're right. The ending was one of the greatest, greatest endings I've ever seen where Tom Hanks, and I'm not spoiling anything because if you haven't watched this movie, I don't know what's wrong with you, you know, whispers to the guy, Matt Damon's character, earn this, earn this. And then that guy turns around and looks at his family and says, "Have I earned this?" Yeah, as an old man. Yeah, have I done good? All this. Yeah, so good. And you know, it just shows that you know he kept that with him through his whole life. And, and that's and think about those actors that were in it. Like Tom Hanks was already big and mm -hmm. was a great actor. Think of all the other actors that were were in this cast that hadn't really uh, hit their prime yet. Uh, Vin Diesel was in this movie. Well, yeah, he's one of the first, one of the first guy, big Vin um, Diesel movies. He wasn't a huge role in the movie, but. He was there, and they'll watch him. And now, um, I don't know the names of all the actors um, that were in that squad, but there's that one guy who's in, like, every romantic comedy ever, you know, after that, um, who was, like, the number two guy. He was good in that. Uh, the only one I don't think that has popped up a lot is the the, the guy, um, the, the, the translator. The, hmm. Yeah, I don't rem remember either. I guess we could look but, it up, but, yeah, I don't but remember. almost every other character that from that movie went on to have a very successful movie career. Um, so, yeah, that is our number one movie that is themed from World War II. And, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, let us know what you think. What is your top five list? Did we miss any? Um, should we move some of those around? If you can even remember what numbers they were, because we had so many tangents in the middle of those, hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at Words my Face on Twitter, Words my Face at gmail.com. Of course, Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. And let's roll it over to our next segment. And this is one that we keep coming back to. And that is HBO Go has recently announced that they're developing a way to make, instead of having to get HBO Go with your paid cable subscription, just making it a paid subscription by itself. And so you can stream finally. it. Yeah, finally is right, because we've been talking about this for a long time. I know a lot of other places have too. But, you know, just a way to get it like I can stream it like my Netflix pretty much anywhere, my computer, my Xbox, my PlayStation, uh, a lot of devices that you just plug into your TV. Some TVs will let you just stream these things. So making it an app. Um, and just I wanted to talk about... They already do. It's a streaming service. It's just you have to have a cable subscription. Like, come on, just cut the ropes. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, just instead of you paying the $8 a month or whatever it is for your cable subscription ought to add on, on to, why not just pay $8 directly to HBO? Um, and that seems like that's what they're going for. So that's pretty cool because this is going to be very similar to like the Netflixes um, and the Amazon Primes. Um, now, I'm not going to put it in the same boat as Hulu because I don't really think it is. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I find it interesting. This is the first pay channel to do this. Mm. I bet you, uh, I can almost guarantee you, within the next three to four months, we'll start seeing 
pay channels like Showtime, Cinemax, Stars Channel all come out with similar streaming services uh, because they already have it pretty much with the add-ons, the the Showgo, the Cinemax Go, or Cinego, the Stars Play. You know, they already have these available. They, like you said, just cut the cords with the cable companies and go that way. And now I don't see this really taking a hit on people who already pay for the subscription through their TV cable provider because if you already do that, then it's going to be the same. Why not just keep it the way you have it and then you can also have it on your TV But you know, you know, as one of the regular channels. But if you don't, like I don't, it'll be a way to bring people in that might not have wanted to do it before. I mean, like, this entice I mean, you a little more? Yeah, it would entice me a little bit more because I don't Honestly, I got rid of my cable subscription a while ago um, just because, hey, I had all this other streaming stuff. I don't need the cable subscription. I don't care. Um, um, it's more convenient, it's more cost-effective to just have Netflix and Amazon Prime, honestly, than to get a big cable subscription with channels I don't use anyway. Well, see, um, my only thing is I still would need cable because I watch, watch a lot of sports and you have, like, basketballs on TNT. Uh, it's yeah, on that hasn't really been taken care of yet. That's not going to change, especially since of the, the new rights deal. But if it was just the main four channels, you can still get one of those little things to plug in and get digital free TV, um, but you, you can't get all the other sports mm -hmm. channels. And uh, talking about it earlier, uh, that CBS is, it might be doing something very similar. Uh, they are going to unveil their catalog first. Yeah, yeah, new new shows oh, on there. That's why you don't drink carbonated drinks before the show. I don't want to hear. And the shows Brendan on the CBS is not coming subscription through. service. It seems like. And old ones. I mean, I can hear you, Brian. Yeah, so I, I can't really. All right, well, that's good, so I'll just me. keep talking. All right, well, who knows who's really breaking up. And I, and I really yeah, think you that can this, keep talking. We'll find this, out. Will happen, this will happen for a lot of channels. You'll start seeing them, especially the bigger channels. Now, I don't think this is necessarily the nail in the coffin for cable yet because, again, people like me who like sports, there's lots of shows on, like, TNTs, the USAs. That's and, right, you know, there are. The biggest thing, um, you have the History Channel. Uh, that's... Unless that does it, I'm never going to get rid of cable because that's what I need. I need my sports and I need my history channel. Brian, Without there's already a history channel on Amazon Prime. Yes, but they do not have everything and they have, they have a lot of it. Yeah, but I've already watched it all. <laughs> okay. They don't have the newer stuff. They don't have the older stuff. Because like, no, they no. still every now and then bring back the documentaries from a long, long time ago. So I, I still need some of those. Now, one of the things I did see for CBS is they're going to be talking and trying to negotiate with the NFL. And the NFL is the hardest one to crack. Um, but they're going to be talking with the NFL about trying to, to move at least some of the games that the C that CBS has onto the streaming service as well. Which they do um, have the Thursday night games right now. So that that would be a big thing. So, well, they have the Thursday night and then they have AFC on Sunday. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. And you know what? I wouldn't be so surprised if YouTube, with all of their... I mean, they already have a lot of content generators there if they just develop them into a channel, which I know they've talked rumblings a little bit here and there, and they are kind of pushing it out there. But if they really, really take that next step with their, their talent and make themselves a pay channel, too, I wouldn't be surprised about that. YouTube, I mean, they, they have a paid-for area, but I don't think any... It, it has... It really but the, compared. Think of YouTube as free. Yeah. Yeah, but it's. It, I mean, I'm talking about they could really take their resources and their creative uh, elements that are out there and put it into like a bigger, you know, like an HBO type thing. But you know, that's that's again that'll be seen. Um, I'd prefer not to see that to be honest. But we'll see. We'll see. Well, they wouldn't get rid of their pay part. They just have, would have the other part too. I don't know. I mean, I think the the mentality of they're not really content creators. They let everyone else do what they need to do, and they sometimes do fund people like big names to uh, to make stuff and push them out. I think that's a little bit better. Um, they do have paid for areas and all that, and I I prefer them where they are. <laughs> um, you know what? I changed my mind now. I agree with you. That, that's a first. I don't know if I've ever agreed with Brendan on this show. But he changed my mind right there because you're right. I like it to keep it where it is. The raw content developers. It's 
It's more free flow, and let let the big channels snatch those guys up if they want to later. Yeah. And sometimes they make big enough stuff like uh, Video Game High School ends up on Netflix, ends up on other places, right? But um, but still, yeah. Like, no, I'm with you. I agree with you. I I retract my previous statement. Never happened. Exactly. Maybe because I'm not feeling so well right now that I I agree with him. Maybe I don't know. All right. I'm pinned down. It's a great sound effect to go to. <laughs> but yeah, so, for the World War II part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably a couple times in there. But uh, let us know what you think about HBO going to be their own, uh, you know, subscription service. Are the other guys going to follow suit, or is this just kind of a one-off shot? Um, hit us up. Let us know comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, What's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. And let's roll it on to my favorite subject of the night. Not subject, but subjects. Ba-ba-ba. Quick hits of the night. Oh, man. Is it stuck? No! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so let's talk about the first quick hit. And that is the Halo series has sold over 60 million copies. Um, and they released this information just before the Master Chief collection comes out. Which, you know, if you look at it and you look at, like, pop stars or just just let's think about one of the biggest bands in the world. If you sell 60 million copies, you are humongous. And video games still don't get kind of the recognition in mainstream that they should, I think. Yeah, uh, I mean, granted, Halo has, what, five, six titles now? But still, yeah. that's not, it's 60 million is not, nothing to scoff at. So. Any game that can sell ten million dollars a co- ten million copies per game, I mean that's yeah. Especially you think like these games, at least initially, are what sixty bucks a, a pop. So mm-hmm. that's a good chunk yeah. of change that people are. Yeah, that's a lot more than a music album, which is ten twenty dollars, or a movie yeah. tape, which is you know ten twenty thirty whatever. Yeah, well, it depends on what you see. Yeah. So, but yeah. So let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is that. Uh, the new DLC is coming out for Mario Kart 8, and it features a new vehicle, which will be Link's Master Cycle. So, mm-hmm. I saw a picture. Uh, I've already purchased it. it. Oh, you've already purchased it? Yeah, we purchased both the, the DLCs a few, uh, a little while ago. We're, so you got we're like a, for it to hit. So you got like this, uh, the subscription or whatever they call it, the season pass? Yeah, um, I, they didn't call it a season pass, or maybe they did. I don't remember what they called it, but it was a bundle of the two DLCs, and you got like a couple extra colors if you got it early. And I was like, all right, well, whatever, we're going to get it, because Mario Kart 8 is, is surprisingly fun. I haven't even really surprisingly been Surprisingly fun? You knew it would be fun. Come on. I, that, I didn't know it would be this fun, because I haven't cared much about Mario Kart since the first Mario Kart. Which was awesome. A lot of people say since '64 they haven't cared. I haven't cared since the first, but I like this one a lot. So, so yeah, well, and and the the pictures of it do, does make it a cool looking motorcycle. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's cool to see that Link's gonna be in it and everything. It's like, yeah, cool, you know. Yeah, yeah this is Link's first appearance, I guess. In and Mario Kart, yeah. It's funny, like Link is not necessarily one of the ones that they drag over to their Mario franchises, you know. Yeah, most of Mario. Um, it's like Mario Golf or something like that. Why not just put Link in there, you know? But they don't, or tennis or anything. Yeah, so. I think the, usually the the Mario main titles um, stick pretty closely to ones that have been more like closely associated with Mario. Like you'll you'll see Donkey well, Kong like characters Donkey in there. Kong, yeah. yeah, but remember the first oh, Mario yeah, game so was Donkey Kong. Technically, with so. Donkey Kong, that's that's true. That's true. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is uh, set your calendars or set your watches or set your alarms on your phone. Set something because Constantine is coming October 24th. I believe it's going to be at 10 p.m. on NBC. And if you've ever watched the show, you know we're all we're both really excited for the show. Um, and I believe it's on a Thursday, so that's going to screw us. Yeah, I was about to say, like, hold on a second. 10 p.m. on a Thursday. That's, we'll be uh, doing our show. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, you can just catch us on YouTube the next day, or you can just catch Constantine on On Demand later. Huh? It'll be there. It'll be there. So One way or I, the other. Or you can watch us both at the same time. You can do it. You can do it. You really could. We believe in you. We, we do. We, we have faith that you can do both. That's how much we love our fans. All right. Our love our fan, I should say. All right. No, we have 38 subscribers. We have more than one. <laughs> so, everybody. <laughs> 
There are millions and millions of you. Millions and millions. So subscribe if you haven't already. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. Um, and this is from the world of comics. I just thought it was cool. Uh, Arkham Manor number one is going to debut this week, and that is where the Bruce Wayne Manor, um, the Wayne Manor, I should say, is uh, being transformed into a new Arkham Asylum type thing. So I just thought that was an interesting idea for a comic. It seems like a like a reverse trend, like because they went from Asylum to City, which is obviously much bigger, to Origin, which I guess is is time. No, no, those so are the video bigger. games. So those are the video games. This is the comic. What? There's a what? Yeah, this is the comic. Did you not? Did I not say that? I I believe I said Arkham oh, Manor comic. To you? Comic, comic. So this will be a comic. I don't know if this will be a video game. Hey, it could be a cool video game, but yeah. You know they're gonna make a video game. No, no, work. cause Arkham Knight is supposed to be the last of that that, that group, so Yeah, once I see the money rolling in, it'll change their minds. Like I think wasn't City supposed to be the last one originally? No, no. They had a, they'd always planned a trilogy. Lies. Okay. Well they did more than a trilogy anyway. No, Origins was done by Rocksteady, uh, so they licensed okay, so Rocksteady it out. will make a, a, a no, I'm sorry, Rocksteady. I'm sorry, Rocksteady made the original ones. Uh, Mon- WB Montreal made the uh, Origins, so it was a different studio, same big licensing group. It's kind of okay. like how some of the Call of Duties, some people don't consider the ones done by Treyarch as real Call of Duties, only the Infinity Ward ones, you know, different things like that. But yeah, that that is that. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Jade Raymond. Um, she was a big producer at Ubisoft Montreal. She's leaving. And if you love mm. the games like Assassin's Creed, she did a lot of those games. Splinter Cell Blacklist was one of hers. And Watch Dogs, which I really enjoyed, was one of hers. Uh, she's leaving to go on and do bigger and better things. So uh, I'm going to be interested to see in which studio she lands at because we'll see what type of games pop out of that studio after that. She's mm. one of the more influential people in games. Yeah, yeah. Um... It's always like kind of a coin toss with what happens when the, the really big players shift off of the the big uh, game companies, but it it happens. I think EA started out as like a bunch of guys from Atari or something like that. Maybe that was Activision, but yeah. So, so. it'll be interesting. Is she going to go off to another company, or is she, she hasn't go said start her own thing? She hasn't said yet. Yeah. Um, she just said she she's ready to move on. So. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Uh, but let's move it on to the last quick hit of the night. And that is uh, Domestic Box Office. Fury has come in number one, and that's kind of why we had our World War II movies. Huh? You get it? You get it? We're tying things into every everywhere. Okay. I'm pinned down! Gone Girl has come in number two this week, um, and in their three weeks, they have grossed 107 million box office. And then The Book of Life debuted at number three with 17 million Um yeah, so that's your box office numbers for the weekend. Not as big of a weekend as it was two weeks ago. I remember when Gone Girl first came out, that had like 39 million. That was a huge weekend. I don't know. Well, it's like middle of October, right? So, yeah, so we're getting I mean, ready for some of the horror movies to come out. So mm. Yeah, they've already like kind of started to come out. And horror movies, they'll, they'll sell, but they're, they're whatever. But also, we're not at Halloween just yet, so... Yeah, so... Yeah, we'll it's, I, I would expect a slow time. Yeah. But that was the quick hits of the night. I don't know what Brendan's doing with that. <laughs> okay, one more for good measure. But uh, so let's. All right, I meant the last one was for good measure. That's just too many measures. Okay, <laughs> enough throat slashing. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's talk about the last story of the night. And that is our video game story. Talking about um. Video game scholarships and Robert Morris University. It's a smaller Chicago university. Recently announced that they were going to give away uh, not a full scholarship, but a half scholarship. So they pay for half of everything for the for the students to go to the school for a League of Legends varsity team. So they're they're going to pretty pretty much. It's almost like you're getting a sponsor for your video game team, which is kind of interesting because League of Legends World Championship just happened this past weekend in South Korea which probably is the eSports capital of the world. I mean, if you are into eSports, there's no better place than Korea because they make some of those people like superstars. Like we make NFL players, NBA players, you know, different sports players, superstars here. 
they make that with esports. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it shows done. up in their in their news. People watch it as a big event. It's I mean, I think StarCraft is just like one of their biggest. StarCraft is their events. NFL. I mean, it's yeah. pretty much their NFL. But then they also have fighting games. They also have League of Legends is huge. Now they packed a forty thousand seat stadium and it was sold out for people to watch the championship, World Championship League of Legends game, um, which was actually Samsung White beat uh, Starhorn Royal Club. Uh, Samsung White is from South Korea, and Starhorn Royal is actually from uh, China. And it was a $1 million prize for those guys. So that's pretty crazy, too. Yeah. And they're also saying that over 35 million people watched worldwide. Now, as a person... That's, that's prize money. That's not including all the sponsorships they're going to get. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, as a person... Who's never played League of Legends myself? I've never played the game. I don't even know if I've ever watched anybody playing it. I know it is a uh, what is the a Moab, a massive Dota. online battle arena game. Dota, mostly Dota. Well, Dota, defense Dota. of the end. But I mean, Dota is also the name. Dota is a type. It's also it is a type. game. Yeah, Dota is a game though. It is a game, but it's also the type of the game. No, I think they call it a Moab, massive they online should. battle I'm arena. Calling it Dota. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm going to disagree. I'm going I'm to say they call it a Moab. Like, I don't care. I'm I played Heroes of Worth. All right, be that way. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so I just thought it was interesting because, uh, I mean, we, we talked about it uh, a couple months ago. We talked about a different, how ESPN was going to c- include a Call of Duty and some of their um, summer games, their X games. Uh, there was going to be a Call of Duty event. So uh, it's just it's it's interesting to see this kind of catch on as more of a, a trend because video games are one of the things now sports – Everybody, yes, you can get up and you can play a, video, a sport. There is no reason for you not to get up and play a sport. But you cannot Unless do you of... happen to be disabled and right, unable fine. to move. No, they can still play sports, all right? They, like, yeah, you ever heard of wheelchair game. basketball? Yeah, you never heard no, of that? No, no, I'm, wheelchair basketball, wheelchair rugby is awesome. In fact, I used to talk about how I would like to lose my legs and play that game. Okay, but... maybe we shouldn't have gone down that road. So I'm going to save Brendan <laughs> and just pretend he didn't say anything. But so it, I'll it, say it, 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 No, no, stop talking about awesome. it. Stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> so, well, your feet are already in your mouth. Your feet are already in your mouth. All right, so let's just stop there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, we, we are, we are kind of off. Someone hates on a wheelchair rugby. I don't know why, but... I don't... No, it's a great sport. I'm all for it. But, yeah, so it, just but talking about how it's play it? becoming in mainstream... Um, it's just really interesting. Now, HBO, Real Sports, and Real Sports is in their title, so they're actually doing an episode about the League of Legends tournament. And it's funny to see. Now, I enjoy, I like hearing that these video games are hitting the big mainstream like that because I think it gives it a little more uh, a credibility. Um, it, it makes it more of a legit form, but I think it almost also deletes it a little bit, because you get away from the art form of what video games used to be, uh, and more into just the commercial form of video games. Now, I'm not saying this is bad, I do like it, um, but it, it's just, it, it, it kind of takes me both ways. Now, a lot of times when you're playing video games, it does take skill, it takes reflexes, it takes creativity, it takes puzzle solving, it takes a lot of things, especially with a game like League of Legends, I believe you have to create your class, and you have to it creates teamwork because you have to work with a group of team, a uh, group of people, and you got to have people that are strong in something and weak in another thing, and then everybody has to cover for everybody. So it does develop strategy and stuff like that. But uh, it, it's just interesting to see how a university is going to say, okay, well, you know what, our player, our kids play video games anyway, so let's, uh, you know, let's put the best out there. I don't know. Are we going to see more universities start doing this? Probably. Um, the big thing there, it's just like with. Sports. The reason why you give sports scholarships is because sports um, help get your name out. And True. as League of Legends, as other games get more attention, and as playing it gets more attention and um, all that, um, you're going to see more and more universities jumping on it so that they can get their name out to a different crowd um, and, and attract more people that way because they need to attract people. So. Yeah. Now, the one thing I'm going to bring up as a negative for video games that sports is not, sports is more of a way of competition. It's a physical competition, but think think about when you see two MMA fighters in the ring. What do they do after they've gone three rounds against each other, beating the crap out of each other, they're bleeding, they're, they're bruised, they're beat up? A lot of times they come to the center of the ring and they hug, and they say, 
good match. What do you see with uh, you know NFL players? You see them after the game, no matter what the score was. Both teams come to the center and they shake hands and they they or talk to each other, other, each other's ankles. Or well, okay, that's different. That's that's in the middle of the game. But I'm just um, saying it happens. No, too. no, that was in the middle of the game. Okay. Stop it. Stop Stop ruining my point here. Um, and I see sports is one of my favorite things about sports is it kind of breaks down the barriers. It, you know, it doesn't matter what color, race, uh, I guess it doesn't matter what gender you are for some of these sports teams. But you, you put all these people together and you throw them out there and they kind of forge a bond with sports. Unfortunately, with online games, especially like the Call of Duties, you know, because you're not seeing people face to face, you have the trolls out there, um, and that's just one thing. You know, like you play Call of Duty. If somebody, if it's a girl on the microphone, every single guy wants to just either make fun of her or try to hit on her, which it, it just doesn't make any sense. So that's yeah, going to be but, have to be an aspect that's addressed before this can really take off into the mainstream. Yeah, but and you, be you really might be talking sport. about the difference though between. Um, uh, professionals and, and big, you know, uh, star college players versus the guy playing pickup basketball on, at the park. You know, Whenever so I played pickup basketball, if you different. knock somebody down, they say foul. I mean, yeah, you could get heated from time to time, but 90% of the time you pick that guy up and say, my bad, man, you know. Yeah. You don't see that with, with, with the video games. Yeah, you, you, you sometimes do, I have, but Bird? it's not as much. Well, okay. Uh, I so think the other I'll, I'll bring out one, 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 one example of where I'm wrong and you're right. But uh, I remember I was playing uh, Zombies the first time Zombies came out for Call of Duty, um, Black Ops, I believe that was. Uh, it came out before that, but that was the first time I had played it. And I remember I was playing a level, and this guy was like, "Hey, man!" I was like, "Hey, I'm sorry, man. I'm I'm new. I, I don't really know." He's like, "Hey, that's cool, man. Watch me. Just sh I'll show you all the secrets and everything." And he did. He took me around, and every time I died, he ran over and revived me and everything. And I was like, "Oh, cool. Thank you for like you know." Encouraging me to be get better and you know bringing me in, and I just don't think you see that enough with esports. Like yeah, you might not see it sports. enough, but um, you might see some more of that sportsmanship coming out in in the level where everyone's in a room because it's competitive, like really high competitive play. Those guys oh, see each other more often. Yeah, that is uh, true, and they do see each other face to face. Um, there's probably more to be uh, worked on there. Like sports is where it is now with that kind of sportsmanship because. People took charge and worked on that. Yeah. Um, like the the NFL, the NBA, they always talk about sportsmanship. They they penalize bad sportsmanship. They they applaud good sportsmanship and everything like that. So, but esports hasn't been around long enough to really mature to that state. Um, but I could see it it coming anyway. Well, so yeah, so pretty much to surmise my points, because I know I've been all over the map with this, I think it is a good thing that esports is becoming bigger. I think it, it helps video games, it helps, you know, just different different things. It's a new avenue for the new age of kids that we have. You know, I'm one of them, I grew up playing video games. It, it opens it up and doesn't say, hey, you're a nerd or geek for playing this. It says, you know what, you're you're doing something. As long as it's, you know, it can be a career, just like if you like to play music, it can be a career. If you're good at sports, it can be a career. You know, if you're really good at something and you apply yourself, it can be good for you. Um, but we still have bugs that we need to fix. I, I think that's, you know, we need a patch. Mm -hmm. Get rid of some of them trolls. Get them out. Unless you want to troll us, then go ahead and write me nasty comments down below. I always, I, I, I laugh at those if we get them. We don't really get them that often, but... Are they the trolls, though, the equivalent to just, again, like the, the trash talking? It's, you know, there's trash talking yeah, there's in sports, trash talking. Yeah, no, there's trash talking. I'm not talking about trash talking. And there's talking. sometimes guys that are just about trash talking, like, not, yeah. not at the I'm big cool level. I'm cool trash talking game. in video games as I am on the sports field. But, again, you always have to know that there is a line. If I'm like, yo, man, watch me break your ankles real quick, oh, on the basketball court. And if I say that in the video game, it's it's cool. It's not bad. But I, I'm not going to say it on the show, but you, I don't know if you play as much online gaming as I do, um, especially with the Call of Duties. Uh, there's a line that gets crossed very, very often. And it's one that I don't appreciate. And usually when I hear it, I start going after that person. Um, and then I suck myself into the negative part of it. So, you know. There is a line that you need to draw. On a different, I see you get drawn uh, in sports on the field or on the court mm -hmm. that you don't you don't get drawn online. On different yeah. notes, related to line drawing. Okay. Here's the real big question: If esports becomes a bigger thing, 
the video games move over to our sports uh, channel. No, our sports no, show. because we already have a segment for it here. Um, maybe but what if it becomes if it's a sport? Uh, you know what? Sport. If ESPN is covering it, then yeah. I mean, we'll blur those lines because we can. We want to. We we will. Yeah, maybe it will. Hey, you never know. It hasn't gotten to that point yet. I think that's what we we were kind of discussing. Games will make the bridge. But uh, if if we're around for that long, I, I can see it start really starting to happen within the next five years. Uh, you'll really start to see that kind of ramp itself up. Um, so hey, hopefully we'll be around and we'll still be doing that. I guarantee we'll be around. How about that? Uh, and I burped. Yeah. But I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But let us know what you guys think. Uh, hit us up, of course, comments down below. Words my face on Twitter, uh, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But my throat is raw from talking uh, for the past hour, and uh, I'm done. Are you done, Brendan? Oh, I'm done. He's done. But one more thing, um, I'm still playing Destiny. I'm at light level 22. I'm looking for a good raid team. I want to go do that Vault of Glass one. So if you would like to be part of my raid team, you play. Uh, PlayStation 3, um, Destiny, hit me up. Comments down below. Of course, you can email me at what's my face on Twitter, what's my face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. Um, either one of those places you can get a hold of me, and I would like to de- create a raid team and go tackle that vault of glass and see how well I can do in that. So hit us up. Um, but as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Do. Yep. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Man, and I had this, like, snot that just wanted to fly out of my nose.